What is up guys, my name is Freestyles101 and today I am going to be teaching you guys how to use Sony Vegas 12, 11, and 10 and for now, this is my first tutorial so um, I'm sorry if I drone off a little bit maybe or I'm not as energetic, I did just get back home from school so uh, sorry about that in case that does happen during the video or I stumble or mumble or something like that um, hopefully you guys learn most of the video um, there will be links in the description below as well to different sections of the video, so maybe you guys only want to learn certain things, so you guys can just skip to those certain part, to that certain part of the video and learn that certain part, and then, you know, maybe just close the Windows tab, I guess. Uh, what do you guys, what you guys are going to learn is a basic user interface, moving things around the user interface, trimming and cutting clips, fading in and out. Uh, adjusting your opacity, uh, subtitles, audio cutting and trimming as well, adding outros and images, as well as rendering your video files. So guys, I'm glad you guys wanted to learn this program. It's a great skill to have. Uh, it's just a great skill to know, to be honest, as well. It's pretty fun to use. I enjoy using this program. It's quite a bit more, I guess, useful than After Effects in terms of uh, quick quickness, I guess, because this one, in After Effects, you do have to RAM preview stuff, which takes quite a bit more machine power than simply previewing something in Sony Vegas, but moving on, this is your basic, basic user interface, guys. You got your project media, your explorer, transitions, video effects, and media generators, your project media is where your all your files in your current video project file are shown uh, so maybe you have 10 to 12 clips here uh, you maybe you don't want to sort through all these different clips in your ed editor and trimmer so you can just pull one from here and grab it and pull it into your trimmer as well you got your explorer which allows you to take different files from different parts of your computer and drag them into Sony Vegas at which point you can edit them which is pretty useful to me because uh, you don't have to use one of these file explorer things which kind of sucks because they take a long time, but maybe you're just one of those people who prefer taking a little bit more time. That's fine, you know. Uh, you got your transitions and video effects, which are pretty much self-explanatory. You know, transitions are transitions well between videos, I guess. And video effects is uh, different things that you can do on top of your video. You got your film grain, Gaussian blur, and all these different things that you can do to your video. They're not as extensive as the effects in After Effects because After Effects is a major editing program. Sony Vix is as well, but Sony Vix is more, I guess suited to the average user or suited to making more normal videos and you know more advanced stuff like uh so like face style edits or any of that stuff uh you also got your media generators as well so you guys won't need this for the for this at this moment but you know it's good to know it's there i guess uh you got your timeline your tremor and your timeline previewer as well as your master volume guys uh, so right here, this is where you guys can preview your entire final video. So you have maybe eight or ten clips right here. Uh, you just don't want to scroll through them using the little indicator right here. And you can't hear the sound as well if you guys are trying to preview your video using this. You can't hear the sound. So you guys can always just press play right here. And you guys can see this thing is moving along that shows you what point in the video you are previewing at. So you know, maybe, wait just to get, maybe wait for this to get to ten seconds. And then maybe you guys can add an effect or something, you know, that's pretty easy. And then you guys can always press stop and stop playing the video. Uh, trimmer is where you guys are going to trim your clips. Basically, it's pretty much self-explanatory. The name itself tells you that. Uh, you guys will see this in a later section of the video on how to trim your clips. Uh, hopefully, you guys will enjoy that part as well. Um, uh, I feel that the trimmer is probably the most useful and quickest way to make a video um, you guys can always edit and trim inside your timeline but I feel that it's a little bit more messed up kind of or not messed up I feel it gets a little bit more cluttered I guess when you're using it in the timeline but guys it's pretty much your basic user interface um, hope I'll see you guys in the next part of the video so guys um, hopefully you guys are familiarized with the user interface um, what I'm going to be showing you guys really quickly is moving stuff around your user interface as well as replacing certain parts of it. So let's say you accidentally deleted your trimmer. Uh, it happens to everyone. It happens to me all the time. You know, but for a first time user, someone's going to freak out for that. You can always just go to view, click trimmer, and boom, it's back there, guys. 
Uh, also, you guys can pull more things, so maybe you guys want to pull video scopes. Uh, you probably won't need this, to be honest. Uh, and you don't like it just floating in the middle of the screen. It kind of sucks. It looks ugly. It looks shitty. So, you guys can just drag it and put it right here. That's pretty much it, guys. So, you got a little radar thing going on. But uh, maybe you guys don't want that there anymore. And maybe it's taking up too much space, so you guys can always just decrease the, sky, the size, I guess. And then maybe it, you guys still don't want it there. You guys can just drag it back out again. If I can get it out, okay. And then you guys can click X right here, and boom, it's gone, guys. That's pretty much it. That's how you move stuff around the user interface, as well as regaining stuff in case you deleted them. It happens to all of us. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Uh, hopefully that adds on to your familiarization with the user interface. And I'll see you guys in the next part of the video. So guys, right now what I'm going to be teaching you guys is editing and trimming your clips basically. Uh, this is probably what most people use Sony Vegas for and what they want to learn Sony Vegas for. You know, because sometimes maybe you're doing, um, maybe you recorded a marriage proposal, I don't know, and there was some dude jacking off in the background, you don't want him there. And maybe he was only there for the first five seconds because he wanted a quickie, I don't know. So you guys, so maybe you want him out of the video. Um, so you guys can always just drag a clip from your Explorer tab or from your Final Explorer as well. Drag it into your editor slash trimmer, and there's your video, guys. So what the, all these buttons do is pretty much self-explanatory. You hover over them, and it tells you what they do. So maybe you have your indicator right here, and you don't want. Maybe you're just lazy. You don't want to scroll back. You know, maybe you're just tired. I don't know. You just click go to start and then boom it goes straight to the start guys um the way you edit and trim clips in sony vegas is a little bit different from other editing programs such as adobe premiere from what i've seen uh it's more like a highlight fashion uh so let's so an example uh maybe i want my video to start right here as this thing comes in so i create the start highlight point right here then I move my indicator to, let's say, the end of the race. So maybe right about here, I guess, where I barely win the race. Um, and then you click this end point as well, and that your video is highlighted, guys. It's pretty much it for editing and trimming those clips. Uh, so once it's highlighted, guys, you just drag it to the timeline. Voila, it's there. Uh, audio pretty much works the same way guys uh, there's nothing very different um, but I'll show you guys real quick if I can get this open oh there it is never mind uh, I have the Benny Hill theme which is a pretty funny song to listen to uh, I use it in a lot of my comedy videos you guys can check that out it's a remix done by uh, I believe Construct Productions uh, there'll be a link to his uh, channel in the description below um, so you have all this giant waveform guys and it's kind of crappy to look at because you don't know where stuff starts and you don't know where it ends as well all you got is like little cum stains all over the place so you can always just press play and i'm gonna turn on this actually maybe that'll work no it doesn't okay um so basically i'm ram pre i'm basically previewing the song right now so maybe i want it over here okay so that seems like a good place guys so stop that so maybe you guys want the end point right here and then I'll move the indicator over here and drag that. So it's basically the same thing guys. You guys just drag it over here and drag it over there and then you highlight it and then you drag it into your timeline guys. That's pretty much how editing and trimming your clips works. Uh, just drag this in the timeline and that's it guys. <laughs>
on to the next section of the video, which is going to be fading in and out. Since I already have the clips right here, guys, um, I'm just going to use these clips in particular. Um, so, one thing that's cool about Sony Vegas is that you don't have to enter a certain keyframe or something like an After Effects. You don't have to actually change the values using numbers, which I think is a pretty cool thing. Uh, you can all you, there's more. It's more of a slider-based program. Everything in Sony Vegas tends to be using sliders. So this is how you adjust your opacity, guys. It's this little trapezoid thing in the middle of your video. Usually, usually it's this middle frame right here, and you guys can drag it up and down, and it'll show you the percentage that your video is currently at for its opacity. So that's pretty much how you change your opacity, guys. Also, fading in and out is a great way to make your video a lot more professional guys all you guys gotta do is hover over the very top edge of your video and then click it and drag it kind of over to the right or left depending on which way you're doing it so what that little hover thing is showing is where it's gonna fade into so it'll fade in the video all the way up to the 25 25th second 25th nanosecond I guess now it's going to fade it all the way in, so now it's fading into the first second of the video. So if I preview this right here, you guys will see, oh, oops. As you guys can see, it's going to keep on fading into the video. That's pretty much how you do it, guys, um, for fading. You can also do it on the end of the video in case you want to fade out. It works the same way. goes for audio as well, uh, just you know, fade like this. Also, a great way to do intermix audio files or video files is doing this actually fading in and out. Uh, maybe you guys have two of these maybe in the same layer, so you want to do this, So, but you only want this one to come in a little bit after. So you can always just fade this one out. You can always fade this certain one out and fade this one in, and the two will mix together perfectly. next thing guys is your subtitles um, subtitles aren't always necessary in your videos uh, I use them sometimes maybe to sometimes they add a more comedic effect to your videos uh, most of the time they're meant to just you know just help people who uh, don't understand uh, English maybe I don't know English French whatever language you guys speak maybe people don't understand it maybe you guys want to translate for them uh, but basically that's what subtitles do so all you guys gotta do for creating subtitles is put insert video track right here on the timeline and then you click right here and then you put insert text media guys that's pretty much it insert text media and then this little window will show up and you have your text right here so you guys can all the format things are right here so if you guys have ever used Microsoft Word before it's pretty much the same guys you take your text right here so let's put freestyles 101 um, one thing different about this from word is that you have to actually highlight it unfortunately and then you guys can uh, change it so press H where's Hollywood is Hollywood Hills on here okay I guess not last day on earth that's creepy but basically that's how you guys change your text um, so just move this over you guys can see it'll automatically change right here which is a great thing in Sony Vegas you can always just see what's happening as you do it you don't have to wait a while and then preview and everything so you know I got my cool text right here so let's resize this and move it down so that way it looks more like subtitles it doesn't just take up the entire screen <clears throat> uh, you can change your text color guys by doing this you know just there's a like, different color palettes and stuff you can go right here you can change the opacity of the color as well let's make this pink looks nice and pretty uh, you can also do actions animations which um, so if I put dropping words maybe when this text comes in I believe yep yeah, see it comes from the middle of the screen and it drops down to the point where I had it before so that's pretty much what animations do Whoa. let's move this out there so guys 
this is your text basically that's all you guys have to do um, you can do a little bit more you can add backgrounds and stuff which I don't really recommend too much uh, adding backwards you don't want to make your text too kind of shiny and over the top uh, usually ruins a video but guys it's pretty much how you add subtitles into your video uh, you can see it it's a little bit small there because I resized it but it's still there you guys can always do that and it works the same way as a video file so maybe you only want maybe you're creating subtitles for someone speaking uh, that's a little bit more uh, irritating to do because people tend to talk fast or maybe they tend to talk slow I don't know uh, slower speech is always easier to add subtitles on top of of course uh, but you basically move it around the timeline just like you would a normal video file so if I move it all the way over here guys it will pretty much stay there the entire video so you guys can see it's staying right there in free so it's gonna say free cells one for the duration of the video uh, but if I move it back right here it'll be gone when I go over to the one minute one point one minute mark so that's how you that's how you guys add text onto your videos uh, hopefully that guys will help hopefully that will help you guys add uh, more clarity to your videos as well as define your audio a bit more in case people don't understand it or maybe your audio just got messed up a little bit hopefully that'll help you guys in improving your video and uh, hope you guys learned something from this to the next part of the video which is adding outros uh, guys for the most part outros can either be video files or image files from what I've seen I tend to use image files just because I don't like having an insanely good moving I mean insanely over the top um, moving background for my outro because I feel that it kinda takes away from my style of videos which is kinda laid back to be honest and relaxed I don't like to have this crazy over the top effect for my outros. Um, adding an image basically is the same thing, guys. It, adding an image outro, you can just do it any way you guys want. So go to pictures, I don't know, grab this one, I guess. <clears throat> and right there, guys. That's so. That's pretty much how you add an outro. Obviously, it's not going to be this type of picture. This is just my background, or not my current background. It's what's in the background on my logo. Um, so that's pretty much how you guys add outros, guys. It's just either an image or video file. There's nothing big to it. Same as adding another any other video file into the video or audio or image file into the Sony Vegas. All you guys gotta do is just, you know, maybe you guys, to make it a little bit more professional, guys, you guys can always do this fade out and then fade in. So, this makes a much more professional look as well as it makes the video just look a lot more crisper and better. So, it fades out and then fades this back in in case it's an outro, of course. And just delete that by right clicking. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, guys, is how to use all these different items right here. So, if you guys hover over it, it will tell you what they do, but right here, this is where you guys, what I was talking about originally when, this is a master volume of all the video files, but in case you only want to edit a certain track or layer, I guess, you guys can just adjust this as much as you want. I believe you can type it. Yep. You can just double click that and type it as well in case you guys want maybe an exact decimal point type of audio setting. You know, that's pretty much how you do it. and right click and then you guys can open an existing project or media file as well as insert audio and other video and audio layers uh, that's pretty much how to use the timeline add outros guys <laughs>
rendering is a pretty quick thing to do to be honest um, you just click on here and then drag over it's pretty much all you guys gotta do and Sony Vegas automatically highlights the end of the video or the end of the files basically so or the end and the beginning of the file so that way you guys don't have to line it up perfectly you know so basically you have to highlight everything remember this guys you always have to highlight your compo your composed video otherwise it will not render the video and you're just gonna get a blank screen to be honest uh, so then you guys go to file and you can go to render as just wait for that to show up uh, okay so maybe rename this I don't know team freestyles I don't know um, that's pretty much it guys you guys name it uh, you guys can also show your favorites only. This is one of my uh, favorited ones. Uh, 6 megabytes per second. You know, 720 at 30 frames per second as well. Um, you got a lot of different things you guys can render videos out into. You can also do image sequences and stuff in case you're going to motion track and bougie or something like that, which is a specialized motion tracking software. Um, you get all these different things. Uh, YouTube only, uh, in case you guys are uploading to YouTube, I don't know, maybe you guys are uploading to Mediafire or something, I don't know. Uh, but YouTube only accepts certain video t types of video files. So you got MP4, uh, MP2, Windows Media, and stuff like that. Uh, you guys can use any of these. Feel free to uh, look around and check through these. Uh, find which one works best for you guys. Uh, I don't recommend using giant file types like AVI. I made the mistake of rendering uh, a previous edit I did for um, VL Ace. Uh, it's a current one that just came out in Team Viral. Um, I made the mistake of rendering that in AVI and it turned into a 14.2 gigabyte file guys. So you guys can see where that went. Um, so just feel free to mess around with this guys. Uh, you got quick time and everything uh, one thing you guys should always remember is choosing the right version of your video so right here you guys can see your project file so this is at 29.95 frames per second so I already have this in my favorite well actually I have it in Windows Media so I go to Windows Media I go down here and it tells me the different settings so I can render into 1080p if I want to, I can render into these are all different uh, quality formats. I tend to use six megabytes, six megabytes, just because I feel that it takes a little bit too long for eight megabytes. Plus, six megabytes is also what I originally recorded in. Uh, you guys don't have to re, you guys don't have to render in your original file format. Uh, feel free to mess around with it, of course, like I've said a hundred times, I guess. Uh, but just select one of these guys and make sure to always have render loop region checked guys um, that will make sure that your highlighted portion as I stated before will be rendered actually you can also customize a template uh, you probably don't need to do this uh, most of the stuff is already made as is um, you can also do match project settings and it'll show you all the different templates that you can use that match with this composite video and you can use any of these different files. Uh, mine isn't on there because it doesn't. It's on. It's re-rendering into a better format. Uh, but guys, that's pretty much it. Um, you can always do that. Cl uh, click on it and then click render, and then you'll get this little box that'll show up. Uh, this is a two-minute video, so I'm just gonna click cancel. Uh, you'll get a little rendering box that'll show up. Uh, it'll give a beep whenever it's done, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from it, especially some of my friends as well. I hope most of you learned something from this. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys learned something, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.